On this special episode of Big Data and Brews, we take a look back at a few open source projects and how they work.
And just for the non, you know, non H, the people that yeah. don't know HBase, like high level, how is how is that working, and what's the difference between oh, yeah. like a reduced uh, kind of thing? Once we draw on the board, yeah, <laughs> he, he's gonna regret it. Well, so anyway, I, yeah, I can fill your glass more up than <laughs> throwing it together. Um, I don't know. It's 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 you know it's um, if you've read the big table paper, you know we're pretty much the same. So. Um, most most likely people seeing this didn't. Yeah. 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 They should. It's it's that rare commodity. It's a well written paper. It's like it's something <laughs> it's actually so understandable. Yeah. There. It's actually the whole map yeah. reduced HFS papers were actually written very well. Yeah, so I don't know. So it's like there's this there's a it's actually no, there's nothing more than a big table. Table. Like in your ex, in your um Excel table. And then you have rows. Except this this goes like billions, and then um, what happens is you take you know you take this table and you take you you break it into pieces and then this piece you put it on a on a server of some kind, a region server. I think we should this is going to go bad. I think. No, this is good. Yeah. It's awesome. And so, then you so can have many of those, <laughs> and then each one of these regions. There can be many of those. So you could have one region, or this could have like hundreds of regions. Per region server. Per region server. And then when you add more data in between, or do you just append like an HDFS file systems? Can you can you insert, yeah. so to say? Well, I suppose that's where HBase comes into play. We add, you know, um, we add the random read write to. So you can basically update individual rows, and you can add things, and then so. But also, like small, you know, like small, you know, HDFS is, or even you know, MapReduce. You're usually talking about doing, you know, terabytes, you know, spinning dumps, through yeah. it, you know, streaming through loads right. of stuff. But so what we add to the the family is the the random the random it, lookup of little bits. Yeah, and is there in general a, a queen or a master server that then manage all of this? Queen. I've never heard it called the queen. No, I think you? I'm going to call it the queen. Yeah. From now. How, 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 well, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we have um, we have a we have a master process that um, coordinates all the mm -hmm. the region server processes. And I assume regions are then replicated between multiple servers. Well, the thing is, we all run, we run actually on on HDFS, right? We so don't actually do it. We don't do. We just write to HDFS. So HDFS is taking care of the replication. You know, and uh, as you know, HBase, HDFS is uh, you know it does the replication. Yeah. So when okay. we write, we write to three replicas. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your work at Hortonworks. What's the most exciting project you guys are working on right now? Uh, the most exciting stuff we're working on right now is inside Project Stinger. Mm -hmm. There's two exciting things. I'm gonna erase this diagram, yeah, or try to. Yeah, but, you know, it's it's style if you have multiple layers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so inside Project Stinger, there's two really exciting things we're doing. One is on the storage and access to data layer. It's mm -hmm. ORC files and vectorization. Mm -hmm. Super exciting and yeah. will help that's, anyone. That's who Owen's wants to. child. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. actually, no one. No. He never wants to admit it, but ORC is called optimized RC. In reality, it's Owen's RC. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But he's not arrogant, so he doesn't. No, like he's that. not. No, no. no. I, um, I know Owen's yeah. well. Yeah. But uh, so on the storage side, it's ORC files and uh, vectorization on top of those ORC files. Mm -hmm. And then on the factoring side, on the architecture side, it's projects, Taz, and Yarn. Mm. So now Super Doc Cutting would come in and say, "Org, um, you know, I can do that much better with Parquet." So, you know, jump on that. Sure. So uh, at the end of the day, Org is a format contributed by Microsoft's. Uh, super geniuses inside the PDW team. Mm -hmm. These are actually guys who have spent, you know, in some cases 30 plus years in data storage formats for relational workloads. Um, Orc has some things that are just superior to anything else on the Hadoop platform right now. Like? Uh, like uh, block level indexes. Okay. And type aware 
indexes. Mm -hmm. So it's a columnar format. I'm mm -hmm. not going to bother to mm -hmm. sketch up what a col maybe yeah. I should. Yeah. But I mean, if you have a block like this, sure. you really want to store all column one values, and then all column two values, and then all column three values. So typically, yep. you call this a columnar store. Yeah. Some advantages we get, and most columnar stores, all columnar stores do that. That's mm -hmm. not interesting. Advantages you get is you can take column one and compress it. Sure. Because now you most have likely more, better compression. most likely better compression because mm -hmm. you have more consistency yeah. uh, across value space. Yeah. And um, luckily, very frequently, you know, Hadoop files are sorted, so yeah. even better compression. Exactly. Yeah. Like you take a web log, and this would be IP address. This yeah. would be access port. This would be browser type. This, right. Right. And browser type is going to be what now? It's going to be one or two. It's going to be or Chrome yeah. or what is it called? Chrome or Safari or Internet Explorer, and that's yeah. it. No, no Internet Explorer anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what? We're columnar. Um, and we can actually handle columns where the the individual uh, record sizes are quite large. We're type aware, which means you tell us if this is an int or some kind of numeric value or yep. a long. You tell us that this is a string, and then we start doing things that are type aware. So we're SQL and Java type compliant, mm -hmm. which is superior to, to anything else. But then we have an index as part of each block. Okay. And, and so they're that, stored you continuously. You navigate the block much faster. Yeah. What is, so, how, is the, how big is the block size? Um, it's configurable, but okay. a good block size is like a gigabyte. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, then it makes sense to have an index in front. Yeah. yeah. So, so for example, a string index would be a dictionary. Right. So we dictionary encode strings, and yeah. we write all the unique strings up in the index. We compress them down, and then we write an integer lookup. Yeah. So makes sense. If you have things like URLs, they repeat a lot, and the URLs are actually going to just be URL one, URL seventeen, URL yeah, twenty two, yeah. URL thirty three. Yeah. Uh, integers we're going to have min, max, average, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Per block. Per block. Okay. Date, we're going to have start date, end date. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so and we find that we small and really fast. We find that we go in, and then what you can do then is you can basically use the index to skip a block. Yeah. So when you're doing what? When you're doing filters and aggregations, you want to basically say there's a where clause, there's mm. a query predicate. I can apply the query predicate to the index. Right. And you don't even need to like. Right. And I don't even need to hydrate the rows yeah. or columns at all. So and that's, a row that's is the slow like, part, the deserialization, yeah, the inspection. This, yeah, if this is row one, this is row two, this is row three. Vectorization is the classic Java loop. With mm. my, you know, mm -hmm. with with my connection, I get a result set. And yeah. while result set dot has next, yeah. then result set dot field one dot field two dot field three next result uh, in yeah. a while loop. That while loop kills performance because you're iterating through a result set and you're paging data from uh, various large RAM pools mm -hmm. into processor L1 cache. Right. And what we're doing in vectorization is saying, leave this block dehydrated, flattened, unmarshaled as a block. Mm -hmm. You can look inside the index as much as you need to. And when you do pass across the block, vectorize the query predicate. Mm -hmm. So turn the query predicate into scalars mm -hmm. and then pass it across this as a mask. Mm -hmm. So you're basically looking at a giant set of ones and zeros. And you basically just And you're looking overlay. you're saying I'm looking for the following pattern, one zero one one. And it says there is one zero one one and then you say, oh well I want one zero one one this way. And it says, okay, I see it right here. It's it's row twenty three. Yeah. And then you pull out row twenty three. And then you even don't need so to I'm moving a gigabyte at a time through the data. Obviously, L1 caches are on the order of megabytes. Mm -hmm. So to move a gigabyte into a megabyte L1 cache or a 16 meg L1 cache will take you hundreds of clock cycles or a few thousand clock cycles, which means it'll be done in under a second. Yeah. And we literally found a single laptop could manage a terabyte search in under like two seconds. Nice. With vectorization. So. Yeah. The ORC file is tied to the vectorization, mm -hmm. and the ORC file is tied to a lot of stuff we intend to provide to technologies like Data Mirror on top of us, which is this global level index. Because if we take these indexes 
you can use them now mm -hmm. to oh. show people ontologies about their data. Mm -hmm. So I have a column. I know its name. I know its type. And I know its value uh, range. Like mm -hmm. I can bring the dictionary forward into Datamere. I can bring the integer min, max data timestamp uh, values into Datamere. And that becomes dimension data mm -hmm. or ontological data that's yeah. very interesting to the end user. Yeah. Even though the system doesn't know what it is, it's very interesting to the end user. Mm -hmm. uh, I can use it to speed up searches because I can skip blocks. Yeah. Uh, so really what we're talking about is take that index, centralize it to the entire table space or data mm -hmm. set, if you will, and then proffer that up to anyone who wants it. Now you can build systems that actually service queries without ever looking at a record at all. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so how and, is that? And by the way, you paid no price to compute it uh, except on ingest. You right. Laid that out will be my next question. Price. That will be my question on on how is that impacting write performance? Uh, so you're packing a gigabyte block, you're consuming some extra memory, and you're type aware, so you're marshalling the types on write down mm -hmm. into disk. Our write performance for an ORC file needs to get better. Mm -hmm. But right now, uh, we have tuned it, so it's faster, I think, to write an ORC file than an RC file, for example. Okay, okay. Well, and an RC that wasn't great. <laughs> it's always the question of who you perform with, right? Yeah. RC file wasn't great. Um, well, we, we've benchmarked ORC file writing against anything we can get our hands on. We mm -hmm. find the best things out there we're competitive with. Mm -hmm. uh, specific, well, I don't even want to name specifics, but mm -hmm. I don't see a problem in, I see a problem in performance relative to an absolute number I'd like us to get to. Mm -hmm. So we can write um, tens of megabytes a second across a cluster. I want to write hundreds of megabytes a second, mm -hmm. but no one is writing that fast right now. So. Yeah.